the new covenant of reconciliation. Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do, not know, and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord.
fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. Reach out your hand, and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But they are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For those of you who have worked with me for a while now, you know that I am easily excited by new ideas. So, when Ed and Tyler suggested the Sunday after Easter for Quentin's baptism, I excitedly said, yes! I knew there was, we would still be experiencing the high of Holy Week and Easter last week. I knew that baptisms are traditionally celebrated throughout Eastertide. And I knew that having another reason to celebrate this Sunday would be so much fun. What I failed to double check was the lectionary. As soon as I saw the gospel for today, I kind of groaned. Who wants to talk about doubting Thomas on the day that we're performing a sacrament of belief and belonging? At first glance, John's gospel text today is, in fact, a terrible text for baptism. First of all, the disciples are making very poor showing of what the community of faith is supposed to look like. You would think that after seeing the empty tomb and hearing Mary Magdalene's testimony, I have seen the Lord. The disciples would be hitting the ground running, doing the work of spreading the good news, or at least throwing a raucous party. Instead, we find the disciples huddled in a locked room, cowering in fear. The text says they are afraid of those Jewish leaders, perhaps afraid of the ones who killed Jesus, would come to kill them too. But I think there is more in their fear. I think they are afraid to face others because they feel they have failed. Perhaps they believe their pick for Messiah did not seem to be the Messiah after all. Or perhaps behind those locked doors are the disciples because they are ashamed that they failed to protect Jesus to keep him alive. Those locked doors are not just for their safety. Those locked doors are for hiding the shame, the disappointment, and the fear of facing others that the disciples have. And then we have the famous Doubting Thomas. 
That we even call him Doubting Thomas is indication enough of the communal disapproval of his behavior. Why couldn't he just believe? If not Mary Magdalene, at least his fellow disciples, who used the same words as Mary's own testimony, we have seen the Lord, they say to him. Even Jesus seems to disapprove when he asks, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. We do not exactly seem to be setting the stage well for little Quentin or anyone new to the church today. But the more I thought about this text, the more I read, the more I realized that this might actually be the perfect text for someone who is new to the community of faith. As little Quentin grows up, I don't want him to think that faith is about perfectly believing, perfectly behaving Christians who perfectly go to church. And although I want Quentin to know about doubt and to have a super healthy sense of questioning and curiosity, the truth is our labeling of Thomas as doubting Thomas gets in the way of what John is trying to teach new believers. Instead, New Testament scholar Caroline Lewis explains the primary definition of the term doubt has to do with uncertainty. Uncertainty as a category of belief does not really exist in the fourth gospel. One is either certain or not certain, in the light or in the dark. Jesus invites Thomas to move from darkness to light, from lack of relationship to intimacy. There's no middle ground when it comes to believing in Jesus in John. Now stay with me on this one because I realize that dichotomy might actually sound worse than doubting. <laughs> Instead, what John's gospel is doing is not about exclusion, but about radical inclusion. John is not conveying something about belief, but about incarnation. To be incarnated demands relationship. As a result, you're either in one community or another, but you cannot be not in community. Life, especially abundant life, is dependent on the reality of multiple expressions of connectivity and belonging, whether that be one-on-one -on -one or in various sizes of communities. Even God was not alone in the beginning. So, when Thomas says, my Lord and my God, he's not talking about his own belief or an individualized theology, but rather the intimacy this gospel imagines between believer and Jesus. Lewis goes on to say, to give witness to a personal relationship with Jesus is to immediately enter into a community of intimacy between Jesus, God, and the paraclete, which is a fancy word for the Holy Spirit, and the believer, and between the believer and the new community of faith, the flock that Jesus, as the word made flesh, has made possible for the world. On this day, when Thomas the twin teaches us all about what belief really means, that it is incarnate and intimate relationship with God and with one another, I actually can't imagine a better word for us today. When we baptize Quentin today, we invite him into the relationships already present in this community, the real ones that sometimes cower in shame and doubt, but also the ones that lead to abundant life and blessing. When we pour water over his head and anoint him with oil, and commit to supporting him and one another in this journey of faith. We are claiming him not as someone who will 
always have things figured out because we don't always have things figured out. But we do commit to the intimacy of relationship with the three persons of the Godhead, with one another, and with the community of faith. I can't think of a better reminder on the second Sunday of Easter as we deepen our own intimacy with the risen Lord than to baptize and reaffirm our own baptisms. As we acclaim today, I will, with God's help. Amen.
open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite any of our children who would like to come forward. Would you like to come forward? <laughs>
Good morning and welcome to Hickory Neck. We are so glad that you are here today. Just a couple of notes uh, and some updates. Uh, those of you who are doing the Linton calendar uh, with all the proceeds going to our Community Engagement Council, they wanted me to let you know that you all raised $442 for local charities, so well done. We also had an amazing musical event last night and uh, raised a, a decent amount there as well to cover costs and more for our music ministry. So we are very excited about that. If you missed it uh, or if you came and loved it, we invite you to come back on April the 21st. It's a Sunday. We'll have even song with the Christopher Wren singers. So I hope you will come at five o'clock. That's two weeks from now, uh, and put that on your calendar for another beautiful musical event. I uh, wanted you to know that this weekend and next are on the Saturdays are our Sleep in Heavenly Peace build days. So this Saturday is the actual building of the beds. Next Saturday is the delivery and assembly of the beds. So uh, there is a sign up link in uh, the epistle. If you have questions about that, let us know and we can get you pointed in the right direction. And then also just wanted you to know that we have um, a safe church training coming up at Hickory Neck. Uh, usually you have to kind of go somewhere or you have to do it online for many hours. If you are due for that training or you're not sure but you think you might be due, let us know. Um, but you do need to sign up for it. It's later this month um, and it's a daytime. It's a Thursday 9 to 3 training. So if that might work for your schedule and you do need the training, let us know and we're happy to get you set up for that. Anything else I may have missed for the good of the order? All right. What's that? Oh, yes. 
Discovery class starts this week, doesn't it? Yes. Hopefully you already signed up for it. It's on Thursdays at 6 p.m. for the next six weeks. This is a, a Discovery class is a great class for those of you who may be newer to the Episcopal Church, newer to Hickory Neck, or maybe you want to refresh to make sure you know all the things that you think you know. Uh, but do please join us. There is um, a book and a handout, so if you haven't signed up or told us that you're coming, let me know, and we'll get you a book for that. Um, and then also we'll get you the link and everything you need for it. It is on Zoom, so you can do it from home or you can do it from wherever you are, so that makes it really convenient too. So I think those are the big things. Just a quick note about communion. When you come forward, the ushers will direct you forward. Uh, you just put out your hands and you'll be given a wafer. If you need gluten-free, let us know. We're happy to give that to you. Uh, and then when, you, uh, when the wine comes by, it'll be from a chalice. We are drinking from the chalice. We are not dipping or intincting at this time. If you prefer not to do that, receiving bread is receiving communion in its fullness, so you don't have to. Uh, also, if you prefer not to have communion but want a blessing, just come forward and cross your arms over your chest, and the priest is happy to give you a blessing today. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever.
almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.